Okay, depreciation. On May 1, 2019, Guevara acquired service vehicle for 420,000 pesos. The service vehicle will last for 7 years and with a salvage value of 84,000 pesos. Ang depreciation is pertaining sa mga long-lived na assets. So, example nito is itong binanggit sa problem. We have the service vehicle for 420,000 pesos. Service vehicle is an example ng long-lived assets kasi hindi naman, kasi mahaba ang buhay ng mga sasakyan. And sabi sa problem, <clears throat> ang service vehicle will last for 7 years. Ibig sabihin, 7 years na magagamit ni Guevara yung service vehicle. So, kapag nilagay natin yan sa timeline, so ito, yan, meron tayong ginawang timeline. So, May 1, 2019, ito, let's say, ito yung service vehicle ni Guevara. And binili siya nung May 1, 2019. Ibig sabihin, kung 7 years ang kanyang useful life, ibig sabihin, maraming accounting periods na magbe-benefit doon sa pagbili ng service vehicle. So, 2019, magbe-benefit yung entity from May, which is yung date of acquisition hanggang December. 2020 would be buong taon, 2021 hanggang 2025. Pero pagdating ng 2026 hanggang April 30, 2016 lang, yung magbe-benefit yung entity. Kasi ang buhay or ang estimated useful life ng service vehicle is 7 years from the date of acquisition. So yung period that would be May 21, uh, sorry, May 1, 2019 hanggang April 30, 2016. And ang daming accounting periods na nag-benefit. And since na nag-benefit yung madaming accounting periods, dapat magkaroon tayo ng systematic allocation or proper allocation ng cost nito all throughout these periods. Kasi would be mali yung practice na kapag ito ay record ni entity as expense, 420,000 na one time expense. Mali yun kasi marami siyang accounting periods na magbe-benefit. Ang, and ang purpose ng depreciation, which is yung topic natin today, is yung systematic allocation ng cost dito sa mga periods na ito. Accounting cycle Step 5, preparation of the worksheet including adjusting entries. So kanina nag-discuss tayo, nag-sample tayo ng problem about depreciation. So bago natin siya isolve, so i-discuss muna natin yung topic about depreciation expense. When an entity acquires long-lived assets such as buildings, service vehicles, computers, or office furnitures, it is basically prepaying for the usefulness of that asset. These assets help generate income for the entity. Therefore, a portion of the cost of, a, of the assets should be reported as expense. In each accounting period, the estimated amount allocated to any one accounting period is called depreciation expense. Sabi dito, kapag bumibili daw si entity ng, ng long-lived assets, it is basically prepaying for the usefulness of that asset. Alam naman natin na ang long-lived assets is tumatagal siya ng mahabang panahon. So, parang katulad lang din siya ng expenses paid in advance. So, agayon sa mga expenses paid in advance sa prepayments, nire-record natin siya as asset. Kasi, magbe-benefit siya hindi lang sa isang accounting period. So, ganun din yung pagbili ng long-lived assets, such as building service vehicles and computers. Kasi mahaba ang buhay ng assets na to, magbe-benefit siya sa different accounting periods. Kagaya nung pinakita natin kaninang service vehicle na maraming accounting periods na magbe-benefit. Depreciation is defined as the systematic allocation of the depreciable amount of an asset over its useful life. <coughs> so sa pagre-record ng, ng expense relating doon sa pag-acquire ng long-lived assets, <clears throat> inaallocate or ang amount na charge as expense, yun yung tinatawag na depreciation expense. Ito ay systematic allocation ng depreciable amount 
of an asset over its useful life. So, ang purpose lang ng depreciation is to provide a systematic allocation or proper allocation ng expense by acquiring long-lived assets over its useful life. Para ma-ensure na equitable yung expense na nirarecord for every accounting periods. The objective of depreciation is to have each period benefiting from the use of an asset bear an equitable share of the asset cost. So, kagaya nung nabanggit natin kanina. Three factors are involved in computing depreciation expense. Una, yung asset cost. So, kung magkano yung asset, magkano yung cost ng asset na binili. So, sa problem na ito kanina, nung binanggit natin, ang asset cost ay 420,000 pesos. Estimated salvage value. Ang estimated salvage value, ito yung estimated amount na marerecover natin at the end of life ng asset. So, for example, itong truck na ito na binilen nung May 1, 2019, meron siyang salvage value na 84,000 pesos. Ibig sabihin, mababenta natin itong truck na ito at 84,000 pesos after ma-reach nito yung kanyang useful life, which is 7 years. Mababenta natin yung truck ng 84,000 pesos pagdating ng April 30, 2026, which is yun yung end of life ng service vehicle. Estimated useful life. So, ito naman yung useful life ng asset. Yung buhay ng lo, ng assets. Meaning, ito yung period na kung saan magagamit natin yung assets. For example, ito sa track na ulit na ito, ang estimated useful life niya is 7 years. Meaning, ibig sabihin, ang estimated or itong track na ito is good na gamitin for operations for 7 years. Pagdating ng 8 years, meaning hindi na pwedeng or after 1 year, from April 30, 2026, hindi na pwedeng gamitin yung track na ito. Yung track na ito ay good lang for 7 years. Okay, so balik tayo dun sa problem. And ang gagawin natin is magkocompute tayo ng depreciation expense. So ang gagawin natin ngayon, so ito ay binili ng May 2019. Ang gagawin natin is depreciation expense for the year 2019. Assuming na si Guevara, ang year end niya ay December 31, 2019. Okay. Magkocompute tayo ngayon ng depreciation. Ang formula sa pagkocompute ng depreciation using the straight line method, ang depreciation kasi marami siyang method. Pwede siyang straight line, pwede siyang declining balance, double declining balance, sum of years digits. So pagdating natin ng, finans ng financial accounting sa topic ng depreciation, I-discuss natin lahat yon, But for the meantime, nasa basic accounting pa lang tayo, yung straight line method ang kalimitan natin gagamitin. Ang formula for depreciation using the straight line method is annual depreciation. Note nyo to, annual, meaning on a year basis. Annual depreciation is, equals to, is equal to cost minus salvage value divided by estimated life. Yung difference ng cost minus salvage value is equals to depreciable amount divided by estimated useful life. So, apply natin siya sa problem. Cost ay 420,000 minus the salvage value of 84,000 pesos divided by 7 years, which is ito. 7 years. So, annual depreciation ay 48,000 pesos. Depreciation for 12 months annual. Ngayon, kapag kinompute natin ang monthly 
depreciation. Kukunin lang natin yung 48,000 which is annual depreciation. I-divide lang natin sa 12 months. So, monthly depreciation is 4,000 pesos. Ibig sabihin, yung service vehicle na binili nung May 1 ni Guevara ay nagde-depreciate ng 4,000 pesos per month. Ngayon, magre-record na tayo ng adjusting entry for depreciation expense for the year December 31, 2019. So, ang record natin would be debit to depreciation expense credit accumulated depreciation service vehicle at what amount? Okay, balik tayo sa timeline. So, ito yung service vehicle na binili nung May 2019. So, ito ang calendar year ng 2019. Meaning, nag-benefit or nag-depreciate yung service vehicle from May to December. So, yan ay May, yun ay 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 months. Ibig sabihin, for the year 2019, 8 months lang nag-depreciate yung service vehicle. Ang computation ng depreciation is from the date kung kailan available for use yung asset. So, sa case na to, it is assumed na May 1, 2019 available for use yung asset, which is yung date of acquisition. Therefore, monthly depreciation is 4,000 times 8 months times 8. Meaning, depreciation expense for the year is 32,000 pesos. Credit accumulated depreciation service vehicle, 32,000 pesos.